Now rules regarding delivery. The first rule is payment and delivery are concurrent. Concurrent means performed at same time. So unless and until the buyer is ready for payment, the seller is not required to deliver the goods. At the same time, unless and until the seller is ready for delivery, the buyer is not required to make the payment. That means both of them have to do these things at the same time. The seller has to deliver the goods and the buyer has to make the payment. Both have to happen at the same time. Second, modes of delivery. We have already studied, studied there are three modes of delivery. Actual, symbolic, constructive. Third, effect of part delivery. Let's say whole of the goods are not delivered together but the delivery is being done in parts let's say let's say you go to a shop and purchase thousand bales of cotton from there now it is very you know logical to understand reasonable to understand that thousand bales cannot be transported together you know in one truck so what you do is the seller sent the first truck in the morning, the second truck in the afternoon and the third truck you know, in the evening. Now what he has done is he has made delivery in parts. So when you accept a part delivery, that means you have accepted whole of the delivery. Now you cannot say that no, I can, I will not accept the remaining delivery. Let's say if you accept the goods of the first truck and when the second truck comes, you cannot say no, I do not accept the goods. When the third truck comes, you cannot say no, I do not accept the goods. Because when you accepted the goods first time, in effect, it was as good as whole delivery. Fourth, buyer to apply for delivery. Now this is very much logical that it is the buyer who has to apply for the delivery because if you remember if the goods are specific or ascertained the property gets transferred there and then when the contract is made that means from there on the buyer becomes the owner so it is his duty to remove the goods from there to take the goods to take the delivery from there now if he wants that delivery should be done he should be the person who should apply to the seller for delivery it is his duty to apply for delivery. Now place of delivery. Place of delivery depends upon both of the parties where they agree to deliver the goods. You know if the buyer tells the seller to deliver the goods at his factory and if the seller agrees that will be the place of delivery. The buyer tells him to deliver at his home. If the seller agrees that will be the place of delivery wherever both the parties agree. But if there is no agreement, rather there is, I mean, the contract is silent with regards to the place of delivery, then the place of delivery is the place of contract. The goods need to be delivered where the contract is made. So if the contract was made at the seller's place, now it will be considered if the goods are brought there it will be considered that the goods are delivered if the contract was made at buyer's factory and the contract is silent about delivery the place of delivery then only when the goods come to the factory of the buyer the delivery will be considered to be completed so if there is an agreement with, with regards to delivery. The place of delivery is that place 
which is agreed if there is no agreement rather the place of delivery uh, you know the contract is silent about the place of delivery then it is to be delivered at the place of the contract time of delivery the seller has to make delivery within a reasonable time however if the time is specified within that specified time if no time is specified then within a reasonable time goods in possession of third party i've i've already given you this example this is constructive delivery or delivery by atonement or acknowledgement let's say there is a there is b and there is c a is the seller b is the buyer and c is the warehouse keeper okay now a sells the goods to b a sells the goods to b however goods are in the possession of c since he is the warehouse keeper goods are in c's possession so what a does is communicates with c A tells C that I have already sold the goods to B. Now, whenever he wants, he can take the goods from the warehouse. Please allow him. So, what will happen is C will allow B to take the delivery of the goods. So, for this, A has to communicate with C, and C has to acknowledge that fact that now B will be allowed. to take the delivery of the goods to take the goods from his warehouse so this is uh, about delivery by acknowledgement next time for tender of delivery the delivery should be made at the time specified which should normally be usual business hours like um 9 to 5 or 9 to 6 this should be the normal business hours now delivery should not be made at 12 o'clock in the night or 4 o'clock in the morning such a delivery will be ineffectual such a delivery would be ineffectual that means even if the seller has delivered the goods it will be considered as if no delivery has been made expense of delivery the expense of delivery has to be borne by the buyer has to be borne by the buyer however to bring the goods to deliverable state seller will be responsible but for bringing the goods to deliverable state that is not considered as the cost of delivery for bringing the goods to the deliverable state seller will only be responsible because unless and until he brings the goods to deliverable state he cannot sell the goods he cannot deliver the goods so for bringing the goods to deliverable state seller is responsible and from that state to taking the delivery buyer is responsible so if these are the goods at this stage and this is the deliverable stage state in which the goods can be delivered and here the delivery happens so if these are the expenses here 
seller will be responsible and here buyer will be responsible so if the goods need to be brought to deliverable state seller will be responsible for it and to take the delivery after bringing them to deliverable state buyer will be responsible delivery of wrong quantity now delivery of wrong quantity means let's say you had contracted for 100 bales of cotton but the seller sent you 120 bales of cotton now this is a delivery of wrong quantity or let's say he sold you uh, he sent you uh, 70 bags of cotton again it is delivery of a wrong quantity be it a larger quantity than the contracted one or a smaller quantity in both cases it is a delivery of wrong quantity so if it is a delivery of smaller quantity then you have the following options first accept whole of the goods second reject whole of the goods either you accept them saying okay we had contracted for 100 bags you have sent 70 i am accepting the 70 or you send back the delivery saying i had contracted for 100 bags you send me 100 bags i'll accept i'll not accept 70 bags okay so this would be the two options third option uh, i mean uh, the second case if a larger quantity is sent now you had contracted for 100 bags he has sent you 120 so the first option accept all the goods 120 bags and pay for the difference second reject all the goods saying i had contracted for 100 bags you send me 120 so i reject all of the goods you have this option as well and third option here is accept 100 bags that is the quantity that you had contracted for and reject the excess goods okay so these are the two cases in the first case if it's a smaller quantity you have two options accept or reject second case where a larger quantity is sent you have three options accept whole reject whole and third accept the quantity contracted for and reject the excess quantity next is installment deliveries if delivery is made in installments now this is not about part delivery this is delivery in installment let's say you had contracted for 100 bags of cotton but now only 80 bags were available with the seller so he sent the 80 bags and remaining 20 bags he's told you that he'll send after 10 days so this is delivery in installments if if this is done seller has two rights either to accept or to reject as simple as that but the important thing to understand here is the buyer can reject as well he has the option to reject whole of the delivery if the seller has made the delivery in installments delivery to carrier and delivery to carrier does not amount to completed delivery you have given the goods to the carrier to take them to the buyer but that does not mean delivery has been completed that means the goods are still in transit the delivery will be complete only when the goods reach the buyer next is deterioration during transit who is responsible if the goods are 
deteriorated during transit if their quality reduces if you know they become if if it is something which can be consumed they become misfit for consumption they become contaminated if it is milk it becomes spilt if it is oranges they become overripe or if it is cement it becomes stone that means the quality has reduced quality has decreased or now it is no more fit to serve that purpose so who will be responsible in that case who will bear the loss it, it is always the buyer who will bear the loss because to take the delivery it is buyer's duty and anything happens in delivery it will be buyer's responsibility next buyer's right to examine the goods before taking delivery buyer will always have the right to examine the goods seller cannot deny this right of the buyer always whenever delivery comes buyer will always have the right to inspect the goods to examine the goods and if he is satisfied he may accept if he is not satisfied he may send the goods back so these were rules regarding the delivery of goods